I have a dream that one day people will judge each other by the content of the character and not their physical traits, said the biggest racist in all of history. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. So for this video, without further hesitation, I'm just gonna respond to this chart about white identity because apparently it's like, you know, very helpful and, you know, very beneficial to teach kids in school that hating white people is actually a good thing. So let's check it out. Scoop, the principal of Eastside Community School in New York sent white parents this tool for action which tells them they must become white traitors and then advocate for full white abolition. This is the new language of public education. It's very nice to know that our tax dollars are being used in a very productive way because, you know, people complain all the time about how there's like systemic racism. This is literal proof of systemic racism. Here we have a school using our tax dollars to promote hate against a whole subsection of students just because they're different than everyone else. And that to me is frightening. It's frightening, it's not surprising though, that we live in a culture nowadays where it's perfectly acceptable just to hate white people just because they're white. Like, let's continue on and see just how bad this really gets. The eight white identities, white supremacists, white virarchism, white privilege, white benefit, white confessional, white critical, white traitor, and white abolition. There is a regime of whiteness, and there are action-oriented white identities. People who identify with whiteness are one of these. It's about time we build a monopoly of whiteness since white people have been the ones writing about governing others. You know, every single time they just mention the word white people and how whiteness is like, you know, the problem of everything, like replace every single last word with like the word Jew or the word black and you say like blackness is like the Biggest problem in the whole entire world, or Jewishness is like the bibbly bibbly baba. Imagine if they were to do the exact same thing towards other minorities and people reaction to that kind of shit right there. But for some reason, it's perfectly fine because you see, well, slavery happened, so therefore it's justifiable to hate a group of people that, you know, because of past events. It is totally not like, you know, the sense of the original thought or something like that. So, yeah, it's justifiable to hate those freaking white people. The eight white identities. Number one, white supremacists clearly marked white society that preserves names and values white supremacy. Okay, can anyone please show me an example? where the modern day American society value white supremacists because every single time I look at the media, I look at public figures and everyone seems to agree that white supremacists are bad. Was it true that in the past that our society did in fact, you know, embolden racists? That is true. Thanks to slavery, thanks to, you know, Jim Crow, all that jazz. But today, no one really actually, you know, values white supremacists. If anything, it seems as though that the anti-racists are actually, you know, justifying hate for white people. So, yeah. Number two, white vonagenism wouldn't challenge a white supremacist, non-whiteness because it's interesting, pleasurable, seeks to control the consumption and appropriation of non-whiteness, fascinated with culture, I ask, and consuming black culture without the burden of blackness. Wait a second. You're telling me if people were to like, you know, appreciate culture that's different than them, that somehow that's like whiteness. 
Let's take for example me. I'm like the hugest like fan of like different cultures. Like I have like so many Japanese movies. I have so many different stuff from around the world for entertainment, right? And because I consume it and because I eat something, am I also contributing to this sort of whiteness that you're talking about? Number three, white privilege. May critique white supremacy, but have a deep interest in questions of fairness and equality under the normalization of whiteness and the white rule. Yeah, you see, if you want equality of opportunity and not the equality of outcomes, that just shows your big fat whiteness. You white supremacist, you. Alright, so white benefits, sympath sympathetic, excuse me, to a set of ideas, issues, sorry, that only privately won't seek, speak out in solidarity publicly because it's benefiting through whiteness in some public form, some POC are in this category as well. Yeah, 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 it's kind of strange, like, every single thing that's been listed so far just assumes that if someone has it better in life just because they happen to be a different skin color. But that's not true. There are various sort of like circumstances depending on the person. Not everyone is gonna be born rich. Not everyone's gonna be like born like middle class or, you know, poor. And so depending on the circumstances, obviously people will have it hard in life or sometimes people have it good in life. But that to me is like a different question about class because class issues are way different, super different, in comparison to like, you know, race issues. White confessional, some exposure of whiteness takes place, but as a way of being accountable to POC, after seeking vindication from POC. White critical, taking on board critiques of whiteness and events in exposing and marking the white regime, refuses to be complicit with the regime, whiteness seeking back to whiteness. White traitor, actively seeks complicity, names what's going on, attention to subvert white authority and tell the truth at whatever cost, need them to dismantle institutions. You know, I actually agree about the idea of dismantling institution, but not for like, you know, white supremacy, more like dismantling institution that have like critical race theory as part of public schools because we're using our tax dollars to pay for this sort of junk. So yeah, I kind of agree with you, but with a different way. White abolitionists, changing institution, dismantling whiteness, and not allowing whiteness to reassert itself. So, there you have it. So yeah, it seems as though that it wants like the gradual replacement of white people and make sure that there's like no white people ever. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that you know this is not like Mein Kampf. This is not like you know about hating the Jews or hating black people. You see, it's different, and it's actually anti-racist just to hate on white people because they're white. So, what do you guys think about the whole entire graph? Please tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler